Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, let me say this. Don't ever let the new wear off. Right. Hallelujah. You know, the temptation is that after you've lived for God a little while, that that new car smell. You know what I'm talking about? The new has a tendency to wear. Let me tell you something. I've been in this for a couple of years now. I'm still excited about living for God. Praise You know, you look up here and you might see me bouncing around like a rubber ball or, or doing a little what they call like the, the whirly bird or whatever or, or bouncing up like a, like a jackrabbit. Let me say, if, if you only knew what God has done for me. You know, there's some things I get up here and I talk about part of my testimony about how I worked for Budweiser. I was the Anheuser Busch Bud Man and, and delivering and, and I had a, a refrigerator full of liquor and beer and, and, and smoking weed and all of that. Let me drink some. There's a lot about my testimony that I've never told you. God has been so good to me. Hallelujah. When I think of the goodness of Jesus, when I think about where he's brought me from, when I didn't even have a paycheck at the end of the week because I had already spent all my money on bread buying beer and, and, and cigarettes praise God I had to work a second job just to supply my house and people get all out of sorts saying, I can't now. believe you pay time to that church. I, I can't believe you give all that to that church. Oh, let me tell you something. I spent multiple times more going to the clubs, supplying my habits. Oh, my God, you're not going to hear me. I, I guess I'm the only one. Let me tell you something. When God feels you with the Holy Ghost, when you're born again, and He changes your life, I,
the best life. Can anybody say amen to that? Praise God. You can get drunk in the Holy Ghost and not have to worry about waking up with a hangover. Not having to worry about one of your buddies telling you what you did last night. No, I wouldn't. wore off. Some of y'all forgot where God brought you from. Some of y'all don't remember what it was like. pointed this out several times. He, he says, if you look over on that rear view mirror on the side of your car, your pickup, uh -huh. in real small fine print, it, it says objects in mirror are closer than they appear. Amen. Praise God. You're not so far removed. Yes. from. I know, I, I know it may feel like it's been 20 years. I know it may feel like it's been 6 years. I know it may feel like it's just been a couple of months. You're not so far removed from your addiction. You're not so far removed from your struggles, your problems, that those things can't catch up with you real quick. Hey, that's why we encourage you. Don't slow down. You got to keep going forward. Don't stop. Don't turn back. Remember Lot's wife. a little bit, friend. That thing's going to catch up with you. That old boyfriend's going to catch up with you. That old girlfriend's going to contact you. And it's yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, one more time. Let's lift up our hands all over this house. Praise God. Just remain right there where you are. We're going to take some needs to the Lord. We've got a couple of people that were expected to show up today. They may come wandering in here in the next few moments or so. Um, but when they do, let them come into a, an atmosphere that is charged up by praying people, by worshiping people, by Holy Ghost field people. Uh, um, I want to ask you now. Uh, I appreciate Brother Mark Ainsworth being here. Please pray for him. Um, had an accident on his job and, and dealing with some. Not on my job. Okay, I'm sorry. One of my workers that works for me uh, left my house and went home and he slipped on the doorstep and broke his neck. Oh. Yeah, I, I was talking about your. Oh, the, I'm the, sorry. Yeah. Uh, we're going to pray for that also. Um, he, he's got a chemical burn. Um, so please pray for him. But also, he did have a, a co worker that passed away. Uh, broke his neck and, and died. Um, so please pray for that family. Uh, I'd appreciate that. Hey, let me tell you something. We serve a good, good God. Amen. You know, this little boy has been like my family. Six years old, I dragged him around the pond basket. He was an intricate part of my family. He was my brother-in-law's nephew. Yes. And Rosie had spoke to him about coming to church and he was going to come. <clears throat> There's a lot of people fasting and praying for his alcoholic uncle who's on drugs. Okay. And he was at the altar this morning. In the midst of tragedy, God is still working. Uh, Amen. God is on the throne. Why don't we yes. rejoice right now? Believe God's going to touch that man. Jesus, complete that work, Lord. Feel that man. Pull. Hey, let me tell you something. We serve a good, good God. I was just talking this morning with Sister Marcy. Three years ago, she walked into this church and she said the doctors told her she's got two years left. I said three years ago, the doctors told her she wouldn't survive two years. Can I tell you, we serve a good God. Just the other week, they called Sister Francis and said, hey, we think we saw a spot on that cat stand. We need you to come back. They said, hey, it wasn't nothing but a shadow. We serve a great God. Hey, I'll tell you another one. Come on. 
Thursday night, Brother Walter was telling me about a situation he's got going on in his body right now. Right then, hey, I didn't tell him, hey, I'll pray for you later. Right then and there, he lifted his hands and we prayed for him. And he just told me just a few minutes ago, that thing has shrunk. Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, God. It good stuff, good stuff. Um, so we've got a lot of needs. Please continue to pray for our community, our revival. Uh, pray for that family, of course, the loss of that loved one. Got a lot of things going on. Hey. Look, if you've got an urgent prayer request, slip your hand up into the air. We'll take those quickly. Urgent prayer. Walter? Urgent? Okay. Urgent. Anybody? Anything urgent? Okay. Pray for Sarah. Sarah Ainsworth. Pray for her. All right. We'll do urgent prayer requests. Hey, we, we're in revival. God's doing big, big stuff. All right. Let's, let's pray for our community. There's people that said they were coming. Amen. I, uh, Curly and Eddie, they promised me they were going to be here today. You know what? Keep praying. Keep working. It's going to happen. Uh, God's working on Kenya. Kenya may walk through those doors any moment. Pray. All right? God's doing big stuff. Let's do what we do best. Let's lift up our hands. Lift up your voices. God, we love you. blood. Draw them in the midst of this difficult situation, this struggle, God. Like that one that was in an altar earlier today. God, I'm praying that you work all things out for their good and for your glory. Hallelujah! God, you see you people right now that you're dealing with, people that said they were going to be here today, God. And we don't know what the circumstances are that have held them back thus far. But God, we know you're working. You're dealing with individuals. You're dealing with families. God, you're doing things oh, behind the scenes. God, we're asking you in the name of Jesus, keep working. Heal somebody with the Holy Ghost today. Establish somebody today. I pray, God, you see people right here this afternoon. They have a hunger inside of them for something more than false religion. Hallelujah. The, the cameras and the makeup and the fake and the phony. But God, they can experience something that's real here today. I pray in the name of Jesus that you baptize somebody fresh, full of your spirit. And we pray you we pray you do this in the name of Jesus. Everybody say in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Praise God. Everybody feel good? Amen. I do. Hallelujah. Okay, praise God for that. Hey, that's a good report. Let's clap our hands yeah, up to the Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Praise God. Keep praying for her son. He's in um, false doctrine and, and needs deliverance. Yes. Uh, so we're going to ask you to pray for Sister Marcy's son. We appreciate you. That's good, good. God's so kind. Amen, amen. amen. I want to give you an opportunity to give. Amen. Uh, appreciate your faithfulness. Uh, while you are preparing that, let me say, Alicia, I am so excited to have you here. You have blessed us, amen, by being here today. We appreciate you very much. Uh, Kendra, good to see Kendra. Amen. We love Sister Kendra. Amen. Helena, I'm going to see if I, I'm going to try to go down the list. I'm going to see if I can get everybody. Uh, Helena, we're glad you're here. Yes, uh, yes. Lulu. We're yes, glad yes. that you're here. Of course, uh, Rosie, we appreciate you being here. Ronald, uh, man, God is so kind to us. Yes, yes. Amen. JC and Justin, these beautiful yeah. girls. Yes, this yes. is only half of their bunch, but uh, <laughs> but we're glad that they came back. Amen. God is so good. We got some folks from our Pineville Church. Thank you for making the trip. Amen. Brother Mark, love you very much. Amen. Praying for you and your family. God is so kind to us. Yes, he is. Good to have Sister Dunn and their family. Yes, yes, Praise yes. God. Amen. My God. What a great God we serve. So kind. Amen. So kind to us. Brother Randall and Cody, if you would stand and bless this offering for us. John, thank you so much for what you're doing. And it's been way long. I ask that you keep doing it. 
abundantly expect more, God. Bless each and every one of us to give unto your kingdom. Bless the messenger, God, to end the offering in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to invite you to come and give right up here in the front. If you don't feel like making the trip, you just hand it off to one of these one of these cute kids. Amen. Or one of these adults. And these kids, they'll they'll gladly take your money. I have to pay these kids to clean up around here. Amen. You gotta pay them to vacuum and dust and clean trash and stuff like that but you know what we're just preparing them for the day where they grow up and they just do it because they have a love for the house of god amen, amen. again i want to say how delighted i am to have everybody god is so good to us he's doing big things following this service today we are going to be having fellowship over in our fellowship hall right behind me um, it's nothing major uh, let me say thank you to everybody that volunteered to bring stuff um, you know what? We've got milk and cookies. Yes. Amen. We've got, we like milk and honey in the Bible, but we're doing milk and cookies. Amen. And, and we've got some sandwiches over there. Just, um, just some refreshments. Uh, just an opportunity for us to, to love on each other. Uh, we've got some new people that have been coming, and we want a chance to get to know them and for them to get to know us. Amen. Uh, you know what? Fellowship is a large part of living for God. You got to you gotta have fellowship. Yeah. Amen. You need to be connected one to another. The Bible says it calls us a body of believers. We're the body of Christ. Amen. And that means we're connected. By, by virtue of being a body, we're assembled together. We are connected together. When we come together, that's when the blood flows. Yeah. Amen. And so people that isolate themselves, they disconnect themselves from the body. They're what they're essentially doing is they are disconnecting themselves from the blood flow. Somebody say praise the Lord. Amen. You got to have the blood flow. You got to be connected to the body. You know, predators, they hunt for the weak. They hunt after those that have isolated themselves and separated themselves from the pack. So you're experiencing all that hell. Come on. The devil's coming after you. Come on. It may be, perhaps, because you've separated yourself from the body, the flock. Yes. Amen. And so today would be a good day for you to reassemble, reconnect yes. Yes. to the body. Yes. Yes. Amen. Somebody say praise the, Lord. praise the Lord. Amen. Be praying for our bishop. He's traveling out, preaching out today. And, uh, and so just keep him in mind. As he travels home, uh, God use him to this morning and, and again tonight. Uh, be praying for those revival services. Can continue to pray for our revival services. Amen. Have y'all not been? In, have you been enjoying the ministry? Yeah. 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 Now, now, brother Dunn, I, uh, I, I preached and taught uh, Thursday night, and I and we talked to I talked to the church. And, uh, and we're going to help you today. Yes. yes Praise we God. Are. We are going to get behind Brother Dunn. Yes. And, and I'll tell you what. Hey. My God. Hallelujah. Hey. If, uh, if they don't, you're preaching the word. And you see somebody out there not responding. You have the liberty to go grab them by the hand. And make them your shouting partner. And if you don't, I will. I will come grab you, pull you out of that seat, and we'll run these aisles together. Why don't we all stand to our feet? I need your help. But, hey, this man of God, hey, he's doing such a tremendous job. This dude is preaching. He is ministering the word. But let me tell you something. As a preacher, I know that I preach better when the people respond. It's an ebb and a flow to preaching. I preach to you. you got to preach back. And you do that by saying amen. You do that by letting the man of God know, hey, I believe that message. That's my message. When this man of God gets to preaching, you help him. Don't you just sit there with your hands folded across your lap. You get behind the preaching of God's word. Are you going to help him today? Yeah. Hallelujah. Brother Dunn, we're glad that you're here. We're so glad you brought your family with you today. We know that you came prayed up. 
ready, prepared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We know that God has given you a message. Yeah, Brother Dunn, we've got a message for you today. We want you to come and we want you to. Preach the word. Accident or happenstance, yes. or just because you couldn't find anything else to do. Right. But the reason you're here today is because you expect something. Yes. Don't let that expectation die in the pew. Come on. You're already That's here, right. so you might as well take home something. Yes. Coupons and they yeah. they've got they yeah. they got the store mapped out. Trust me, I worked in retail at one point. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know these crazy folks. Yeah. 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 They get it all mapped out. And they have an expectation, Lord, and I'm gonna be the first one when the doors open, yeah. and I'm gonna get that big old screen TV in the back. Yeah. I'm gonna get that bike that's on sale for 99 cents. I, I'm gonna get yeah. the lawn mower that's buy one get one free. Whatever they have on Black Friday. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna be the one that bursts through the door, and I'm gonna be the first. And they expect to get it. Yeah. Why can't we come to the house of God? Yeah. Genuine and everybody's so loving, and we appreciate that. Um, I know my, my 
children appreciate that. They appreciate <laughs> the love that you guys give them and the freedom to be able to run the aisles without everybody watching. So thank you all for your spirit. We appreciate your pastors, Pastor and Sister Wagner. They are precious family. You guys yes, are blessed are. church. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Yes. 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 to me after they've done wrong and they've asked my forgiveness for something. Uh -huh. They still have the boldness to come to me and ask for something they want. They're not scared to come ask me for a cookie. Yeah. They're not scared to come ask me for a glass of milk. They're, they're not even scared to come ask me if, if I don't buy them a toy. Yeah. They're not scared because they know how I love them yeah. and they know oh, that when they are sorry yeah. and they're truly repentant yeah. for something that I give them forgiveness. Yeah. So if there's something you have today on your mind and you feel like well maybe God's not going to hear me because I've disappointed him and I've done my something choice. wrong. God's a forgiving God. Yes. 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 And you just ain't come to me and ask. Yeah, and I love yeah. you and I'll give you what you've asked for because that's my desire. I'm just waiting for you to ask. Yeah. Amen. So yeah. I'm just trusting the Lord today that what we ask for, we're going to receive in Jesus. Yes. Amen. Amen. John chapter 20. Amen. My verse God, 19. I love you, Jesus. John chapter 20, verse 19. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. John 20 and 19. <laughs> you'll be reading just a little bit, then you'll be able to sit down, but you won't sit down for long. You'll be no problem. Then said the same day at evening, being the first day of the week when the doors were shut. For the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews. Came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had said, when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Now we got to understand this is after uh, him being crucified. He, he rose up again and he's showing his disciples. And so then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you as my Father hath sent me, even so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. And whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. But Thomas, one of the twelve called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. And the other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of nails, and put my finger into the print of nails, and, trust my, and, excuse me, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days, again, his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst, and said, Peace be unto you. Then saith he to Thomas, Reach hither th thy finger, and behold my hands. And reach hither thy hands, and thrust it into my side. And be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing he might have life through his name. With the help of the Holy Ghost, I want to preach. Uh, there's a term that we say is seeing is believing, or I'll believe it when I see it. But I want to reverse that. I want to preach. I'll see it when I believe it. My God, I'll God. see it when I believe it. Yeah. Let's lift our hands right now. Let's ask God to help us. Lord Jesus, we love you in this place. We love you in this place. We thank you for your word. We thank you for truth. We thank you for every soul that's here today. I pray that this word would be a seed that would fall into the ground, oh God. It would take a root and it would produce fruit today. I love you, oh God. I pray that you would anoint me, Lord Jesus. Your word's already anointed. Let it go forth, oh God, and do what you, oh God, what you see forth for it to do, Lord. Let it accomplish and let your will be done today in Jesus' name. Somebody shout in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Put your hands together one more time. The ideology 
theology that I believe it, I'll believe it when I see it. I want to tell you today, if we allow that into our spirit and into our churches, it will rob us of being able to see any kind of miracles. It'll rob us of having any kind of victory. It'll rob the very hope of salvation. If it gets into our churches, it can mess up the doctrine. And I'm telling you, in Hebrews chapter 4, we see the dangers of unbelief. And I want to go ahead and address the spirit of unbelief that would love for us to grab a hold of it and to and to listen to its words and listen to its lies. Let me tell you today, hallelujah, that spirit of unbelief will rob you from believing for revival for this church. The spirit of unbelief will rob you and keep you in a place of condemnation uh, instead of alt an altar of repentance. Uh, the spirit of unbelief uh, will have you put in your hands, uh, hallelujah, folding your arms together uh, and saying the only time uh, that I'll be able to worship a living God uh, is if he does something for me. But newsflash, uh, let me go ahead and tell you something today. Uh, he's done enough if he never does anything else. Uh, he's brought you out uh, of addiction. He's brought you out of bondage. Uh, he's brought you into this place uh, and he's given you reason for us to lay hands because the sick will not recover how can you say that well, Jesus he rebuked a few places of unbelief if I'm not mistaken there was a blind man in Bethsaida and in order for him to heal that blind man he had to pull him pull him out of Bethsaida because uh, earlier he actually rebuked that place Bethsaida he rebuked that place hallelujah for being a place of unbelief and in order for the miracle to come to pass he had to pull him out of that place of unbelief so he couldn't have to hear so that they wouldn't hear the murmuring and the griping and complaining. let me tell you today if you want God to do something miraculous in your life it's going to take you stepping out of a place of unbelief and stepping into a place full of faith it's going to take you hallelujah of everything you may ever know. Hallelujah. But I'm telling you, in the name of Jesus, if you'll step out of that place of doubt, frustration, fear, and unbelief, you're giving God free reign to move. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 4 talks about the evils of unbelief. The evils of unbelief. When we go back to our text, we see that there are disciples that are together Jesus is showing himself just like he promised he would he would raise on the third day. He comes back and he reveals himself and he fellowships with them. And those that are sitting in the room, they're full of belief. They understand. They don't hold on to that word. But the scripture says that Thomas that was not with them. Thomas was not there when he showed up. And so when the word came forth to Thomas that Jesus showed up. Hallelujah. Thomas was not able to hang on to it. Thomas was not able to comprehend it because he was not there. Let me tell you, when your pastor today stood in this pulpit and talked about removing yourself from the body, you're putting yourself in the shoes of Thomas. Hallelujah. When you say, well, I can't go to the midweek service and you remove yourself from the body. What if? Hallelujah. The greatest miracle. Hallelujah. Somebody receiving the Holy Ghost. What if? Hallelujah. The miracle of somebody getting out of a wheelchair happens on the day that you're not there. What if? Hallelujah. One of the greatest moves of God that gets this midway church happens when you're not there. You want to be a part of what God's doing. Thomas today. There's doubt in Thomas, like we like to call him. 
He doubted the word. He, he doubted, hallelujah, somebody else's experience. He, he doubted somebody else's testimony. But the other side of Thomas, I can respect, my God. Because you know what? I'm not all right with just sitting at home and somebody telling me how service went and me just hurrahing with him. But I want to experience Jesus, hallelujah, for myself. I want to touch him for myself. I want him to come. I want to feel his presence for my When you believe in something fully, it'll, mm, God, it'll, it'll push you to a place of investment. What are you talking about, preacher? Uh, let me say it again. If you fully believe something, it, it'll cause you and push you to a place of investment. If you, hallelujah, say in your heart that I believe on Jesus Christ as my Savior and I am saved. When you're told, hallelujah, else, uh, when you're told something else in the scripture that something else is required for your complete salvation, if you believe the message, hallelujah, and if you believe, hallelujah, on the name of Jesus, it won't be nothing for you to be baptized in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. If you really believe the message, it'd be nothing for you to come to an altar and to lift your hands and you'll be filled with the Holy Ghost. It would be nothing, hallelujah, if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. It would be nothing, hallelujah, for you to give your life to him completely and the Bible way, not by a pamphlet, not by a booklet, not by a televangelist, not by a radio preacher, not the easy way, but the Bible way. I want to be saved. The Bible way. And the Bible way is to repent of your sin, to be baptized in the name of Jesus. It's the only way the disciples did it. It was in the name that's above every name. to generation to generation. Let me tell you something today. This message 
years. I believe it so much so, hallelujah, that I believe that it's going to go from generation to generation. circumstance in life. When you say, I'm not just going to the church to sit on the pew, but I'm going to be involved and I'm going to feel after the Lord. Uh, hallelujah. There's revelation that comes when you say, I don't know everything, but I'm going to come to this altar and I'm going to lift my hand. I don't know about all the tears, but I'm going to, I'm going to submit myself to what the Lord is going to do. There's, there's something that happens, hallelujah, when the Holy Ghost begins to hit you and you begin to, you begin to speak in other tongues as the Spirit in the blood gives you there's revelation when Thomas, hallelujah, after Thomas stuck his finger in, after he stuck him up, after he stuck his hand in his side, what was his testimony? He said, my Lord and my God. When you step out, hallelujah, you have the experience on your own. You'll have the revelation of who Jesus is. He's my Lord. Hallelujah. But all it will take is what Pastor Wagner said. 
It's just you thinking about the goodness of Jesus. Hallelujah. And that seat. Hallelujah. Won't have any clue anymore. Hallelujah. Time for your backside. All it'll take is you believing. Hallelujah. And you'll be in God. You begin to stand up. And nobody will have to prod you. And nobody will have to prod you. You begin to stand up. You begin to lift up holy hands. And you begin to lift your voice. And nobody will be able to contain you. Nobody will be able to push you down. Nobody will be able to water your fire. Let me tell you today. It's time for somebody in this place to move. Hallelujah. It's time for somebody in this place. Hallelujah. To say, I want to see it. I believe the message. I Hallelujah. When the Holy Ghost filled them up. 
There's people in this place that, that know what it's like, hallelujah, what it feels like. They, they remember the, scar, the nail scar. They remember, hallelujah, what it felt like to touch it. Let me tell you today, I'm telling you there's some people in this place. You need to make a move in this service. The mercy of God is being extended towards you today, hallelujah. And you need to move this service. And you need to say, God, I need to experience you. Come on, if you need the Holy Ghost, I'm telling you today, but don't leave this place without praying. Don't leave this place without seeking. Hallelujah. Come on, I want to begin to make your way. Maybe you're a backslider. Maybe you've been away from God. Maybe you've been out of the will of God. It's been long enough. Let me tell you today. Hallelujah. You can touch his hand. You can touch his You can have an experience. You can pray through in this service today. Come on. Wouldn't it be wonderful for somebody to leave this place with the Holy Ghost? Wouldn't it be wonderful, hallelujah, for a backslider to say, you know what, I remember, I remember, hallelujah, I can mark it on my calendar when I pray through it midway, hallelujah, Jesus, wouldn't it be wonderful for you to leave this place that I have a testimony that my life has been changed. Come on, where's the experience? Come on, I want you to reach right now. I want you to reach right now. Come on, pray, pray, pray.
start looking through the eyes of the fucking nothing's impossible. Nothing's too hard for him. Come on. We gotta start believing. You wanna start to see some things come to pass. When you start believing that he's able to do it. Hallelujah! Come on, I wonder if you can go with somebody right now. The person that's beside you. Come on, can you pray with somebody in this place? I know I asked us to do it almost every service. But sometimes it helps when we're able, hallelujah, to connect and realize that somebody's right there.
we all do that. Let's all thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. Churches prior to receiving the Holy Ghost. And uh, Brother Dakota, I, I've walked the aisle uh, multiple times. Uh, and I'd go to the front and repeat whatever prayer they, they said. And, uh, and, you know, I'd always leave, uh, you know, feeling good about what I had done, of course, you know, taking that step. Um, but, but I, I'd leave with, with the same addictions. I'd, I'd, I'd still have my struggles. Uh, there was nothing lasting. It was just a, a, a moment. It was a temporary, uh, a little bit of relief. But, but it wasn't lasting. And I'd get to work the next day and I'd still have my same struggles. My temper, my God. <laughs> but when I when I walked into Truthway Church for the first time, you talk about an experience. I'm telling you, I, I can tell you what he preached. I can tell because he was talking to me. I remember going up to that altar, brother Dunn. Nobody had to had to drag me up here. Nobody had to beg me. To come get a blessing. Nobody had to had to get in my ear and prophesy to me. I, the man of God just gave the invitation. He he said, "Hey, if you want if you want the Holy Ghost, you just come to the front, and we'll pray for it." And I, man, I I went, now, bro. I remember my knees too. As I lifted my hands, I remember the feeling. I remember touching him. I remember my knees knocking. I remember I remember that feeling just just come on me. As I began to speak in tongues as the Spirit of God gave me the utterance. I'm, I'm telling you, folks, it's real. You gotta get it for yourself. My God. Mm. You you look at you look at these children, you look at me, and and and, and you see, you know, yeah, we're wild, man. We love Jesus. And I don't want to re-preach everything Brother Brother Dunn's already so capably preached, but Suffice it to say and, and to summarize, we've experienced him. We've touched him. Yeah. That's why we are the way we are because we got something that's real. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. We, we got something worth getting excited about. 
Something that will last through Monday. Something that will get you through Tuesday. Something that will get you through Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and by God. Y'all like that Black Friday illustration you did. My Lord. You told them that. You know, you look at people like us and you think, man, these people are crazy. I would never do what they're doing. Yeah. But you know what? If you'll just roll back your, your memory there just, just a little while and you'll remember how silly you were acting when you went to that Mardi Gras parade. Oh, over a little plastic coin about that size and you were jumping up and down throw me something mister my god if you'll seek the holy ghost like you were trying to get those little beads to hang them around your mirror in your truck if you'll ask god the way throw me something bouncing around looking a church like this and you say that we're silly because we because we love truth because we've got a revelation of Jesus because he filled us with the Holy Ghost if you will get as crazy about Jesus as you are about them throwing you a little cup that's going to end up in the trash next weekend or a little piece of bubble gum. I'm telling you, they act. We, uh, Brother Rant, we handed out some water a couple years ago at a Christmas, a Christmas parade. A bottle of water with a Truthway church card taped around, uh, hung on it. A bottle of water, Mark. You should have seen the way these people were acting just to get a bottle of water. And we've got Jesus. Living water. A well of salvation. And they come in. Look at that run. Thank you. In the middle. Well toward the end of December. December, freezing outside our water was just about frozen <laughs> couldn't drink it anyway you throw it at them and knock them in the head no. <laughs> but Jesus got something that will heal your concussion praise God my Lord <laughs> our, our bishop he likes to use this illustration. Hallelujah. People that talk about Brother Dunn, they talk about, well, God didn't make me like that. You know, I'm just, I'm kind of, you know. <laughs> My God. You, hey. Hey, you get a front, you get a knock on your front door and you open it up and it's Ed McMahon. And he's got one of them big old checks with your name on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A hundred million dollars. And you stand there like. Give it to somebody who needs it. <laughs> My Lord. Why don't one more time? I don't get it. See, some people come to church just for the milk and cookies. And the milk and cookies, you can eat enough of them to get you through the afternoon and even to breakfast in the morning when the Holy Ghost will get you through this life into the next. Oh, I'm telling you, God wants to fill you up with something that will satisfy you. Hey, that's why you're struggling because you... Hey, can I say one more thing? Yeah. Come on. Come on. Hey, I still work in retail. 
I, I deliver. I'm a delivery guy. And, I, and, my, and my route is, uh, is scattered all over the place. I have to drive uh, over an hour sometimes to get to my next stop and stuff like that. And so, uh, y'all forgive me. God's trying to help me, okay? But, um, Justin, I'll pick me up a, a, a honey bun. Oh. A couple of bags of sunflower seeds or something. Uh, a, a Dr. Pepper, one of them uh, Dr. Pepper cream sodas, you know what I'm talking about. And and I'll and I'll eat that stuff. And I will walk in the door, brother Dunn, at home to the aroma of something that my wife has been preparing for the last hour. And she says, Hey honey, dinner's ready. But I have already indulged myself. And enjoy junk food. Let me tell you something. There is a lot of people that walk into the back doors of this church just like that. This good man has been praying, mixing stuff up, preparing us a good diet of the Holy Ghost. But all weekend long, we have been filling ourselves up on the junk food of this world. And we've overdone it. And we come into it. My God. We come in to the Lord's table. And he's dishing out something holy. A good balanced meal of the Holy Ghost. But we are, we are so full up on the... Mm. Well, mm. all right, that's going to be it because we're fixing to go over here and fill ourselves up on some. <laughs> You're playing too much, quit it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Mm. What a message. Yes, yes, yes. Mm. 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 My God. Hello, my God, my God. I want to be full. Of the Holy Ghost. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. One more time, let's lift our hands all over this house. Did God help anybody? I love you so much, Jesus. Thank you for this service. Thank you for the good word. I thank you, Lord, for helping us today. I am so excited, God, about revival. I'm excited about these new families that have been coming. Ah, I'm asking you, Lord, to bless this church. Help, help us, God. Our fruit. Let our fruit remain in the name of Jesus. God, you see this time of fellowship, Lord. I pray that you would bless the refreshments. I pray, God, you'd bless our people, God. Help us to go and enjoy this good time in the name of Jesus. Everybody say amen. All right. Let's greet each other in the name of the Lord. Let's go have a good time of fellowship, okay? Thank <laughs> you.